right three. The game is underway. You're seeing these teams now gather together in their positions. Oh, seeing that Skarner come out. Hotshot puts himself in the first seize three. Takes a good chunk of damage, Freak. A very good level one fight here to come, but it looks like that will stalemate it, actually, with the amount of damage done. We do see that CLG is going to be a little bit on their heels because of that and the amount of damage Hotshot took. Well, uh, thankfully for CLG, though, they've got some time still. It's only 50 seconds into the game. You can recall, get his health back up, and go back in. Ooh, big fat getting forced to flash away. Chowster winning out from the wings as well. This is interesting. CLG burning now two of their flashes are now really on the defensive here. They know that their team fight presence is not going to be quite as strong. Hotshot actually choosing not yet to recall and is staying at low health. This is a kind of a risky proposition. I don't really... Uh, I, I'm surprised at that a little bit. Now, Mundo is a safe jungler. His health bar will stay high for a good little while here, but it's still an interesting choice to actually stay around like that, not with full HP. Now, IG still waiting around a little bit. You can see them camping in this brush down by that lower side buff. They might be waiting for a gank here at this bottom lane. Let's see what they can do. Diana waiting around. She's going to be given the golem buff, so Voiboy looks like he will be, in fact, going to that bottom lane on Diana in a one versus two. You can see as everyone else sets up, Cassiopeia helping out Mundo in the jungle. There's really aggressive clearing here for CLG overall. And Voy has teleport actually, so he's actually going to be teleporting to that top lane to do this. A pink ward goes down, IG wants to invade here. And they are grabbing those up. Beautiful job on the wards. I was trying to figure out why people had CS already. And we do have it going down onto the blue. Looks like IG is quite far in there, but they're not even being seen. They're going to get out of this one quite easily. PDD now onto the other blue as well. This is, this is really, really a great opening here for Invictus Gaming. That wonderful invade put themselves oh. in a great situation. PDD just picks up that kill onto that Golem. He's going to get himself back to that lane. They do a one versus one with Golem buff on Yorick. He's going to be able to outlane Boy Boy, I think, pretty easily here. Yeah, that's going to be huge for that top lane. Diana's very bursty. However, you have to sustain on Yorick, so it should work out both ways. We'll have to see if PLG can avoid that early aggression and take it into late. Zitai doing exactly what he did in the beginning to Swain on, uh, uh, rather... To, to Vladimir on Swain. Rabbit yes. Star, yes, yeah, Vladimir on Swain. Star. But now doing it as well to Chouncer, or Big Bat in mid. So pushing Cass back, he's going to get pushed back as well. Once Cass starts to level, once that Miasma is up and she can clear waves, it's going to be very hard for him. The thing, though, is, is the tie feels very, very safe here. He's against a Mundo who went flash, so there's no exhaust, there's no easy game right. for Rasha GG. And Cassiopeia, not the best pressure either. Oh you my see god, those that flashes flash. down bottom. Great job. That was, that, I mean, you get about a quarter of a second to time that. The flash dodging that headbutt from Shao Shao, that was amazingly strong. The difficulty, though, is they still don't have ward coverage. He's still going to camp that top, that bottom lane. And they do know he's still there, saying, all right, double lift is going to go back. He does have some good gold under his belt right now. He's got enough for some potions and to keep the lane safe with Lulu. So we're going to do that. Boy, boy, farming safely top, using that shield. To mitigate some damage, you can just see how much the blue buff is affecting that lane. Boy Boy has to go back already. Hotshot spots Illusion, lands to Cleaver. Illusion gonna take some damage here. He's gonna get away pretty much for free though. Big Fat did come over to try to put some support down. Looks like not a lot was ultimately gained. We're seeing PDD still very safe with the top lane. The bottom right now, Ooh, Cassius with a bit of pressure here, doing some good damage to Zatai. This is the one thing that is advantageous here for Big Fat LP, is Vladimir is a mid-ranged mage, meaning that when he goes to last hit minions or do any kind of harass, he is in range for Cassiopeia's counterattack. And as far as a one-on-one -on -one battle goes, Big Fat LP on Cassiopeia is going to have a better chance of this. A big push in mid here, it's going to be the 3v2, or bottom lane rather, and they're going to get first blood onto double lift. A lot of pressure coming out, and that was just what they needed. It was very slow, came in strong, and they knew what they needed to do. This is a really good play overall. Again, when they're, when they're laned up with an Alistair, Alistair is the be is a ganker's best friend. He's got crowd control, he's got displacement, he's an immovable wall, he's gonna keep people at full health, he even like the power guy. So when you gank for an Alistair, you know you're gonna have a good time. They exactly had that right there. The first gank, burn double lifts flash. All they had to know was that guys, next four minutes will show up again, he's gonna die. And in fact, they had that. So a great overall move there, knowing they could re-up that gank on the double lift. I would expect to see one more in the next two minutes. Harassment from PDD as that blue buff has worn off. You can see Boy Boy not having as much trouble in lane, usually using, or not usually, using his mana to farm instead of really attack PDD and the damage straight. But PDD still pushing down strong. You 
You see Hotshot over by the Wraiths. We could see him in middle at some point. And now that's going to be taken by Big Fat. They're kind of trading off on a little bit of experience there. Pings on Skarner show that he is down by Dragon. Looks like he's just going to kind of hang out. Illusion waiting for movement from one of the teams from top to bottom lane, but he's not going to find it. Five minutes and 30 seconds in. Invictus Gaming did grab first blood once again. Up to Boy Boy. A lot of aggression from PDD trying to stay in auto attack range. But the turret just too close. This is really, though, it's a good advantage here for PDD overall, though. This is going to be a good matchup for a good long while. They pick that partially as a counterpick to that early Diana grab. This is going to be difficult for Boy Boy. Hot shot like top. Get it, take it out on PDD. Forced the flash as Double have taking some damage down bottom. Very nice job. His kid just continuously hitting those auto attacks every time that he can to get the upper hand. A huge burst from Chowser. Wow. Yeah, that turret shot plus all the uh, little spells coming out. Yep. Chowser with the Glitter Lance, a basic attack. It's going to do some good damage. The tie actually just spam his ability trying to shove away Cassiopeia. Actually burned his ultimate as part of that trade. Just wanted to put some pressure onto Big Fat. Flash as well on both sides here. So again, no cooldowns are available. And Skarner, as soon as Illusion hits level 6, someone's going to die. That's <laughs> exactly going to what they want. And that's what they are looking for. Chowster once again to the bush to kind of hold it some control in bottom lane. Going behind, they found Countdown in his own, or going through the jungle invading, and he will be taken out. Clean it up, one to one. Wow, nice reactions there by CLG, finding what they needed to do. You see Zatai will just keep shoving that mid lane. Not worried about, well, not really worried about, not really worried about that whatsoever. They can actually choose to stay after seeing that lane shove happen. He's gonna have to go back for items pretty soon. He's low on mana. He's got some gold to spend, so you're gonna see him run back pretty soon. More invasion coming in. Illusion feeling good. Goes behind. They are going right onto the turret. A huge burst of damage coming out, and it looks like Illusion taking that first turret aggro. Oh, they let him get away! Oh my gosh, are you serious? That's. <laughs> You can't make that kind of mistake in a game like this. They had the pressure. Big Fat had to go back. He was low on health and no mana, no flash, no ultimate. And they let him walk away. Simple com miscommunication there. You know, the thought was right. Farms the tie in mid, give him the kill. But if you can get it, he, it's going to be an assist. Still go for it. Seven minutes and 40 seconds in, we see Invictus with a little bit of miscommunication there that they cannot afford to have any longer. Yeah, well, hopefully they do bridge those gaps. The one advantage they have, though, is even though the kills have been traded back and forth, they're up 600 gold. A lot of that is coming from advantageous lanes. You're just seeing their gold just creeping up over time. They're just farming better than the opposition. That's a very, very big deal for them. You know, the early game was kind of what Evictus was going to be about. We saw that with Frost, where it finally cheated off at the end. And we know that's how Steel he likes to play, where we're gonna get uh, some uh, late game Oh, Illusion's gonna steal the blue away! They had the ward there already, they had that buff time. Nice play there. Illusion is walking by saying thank you very much. That's a very big deal. Big fat LP on a, on a, I can't think of Cassiopeia, sorry. Uh, really is going to be reliant on mana. I guess Thornstring and Chalice will be okay in that lane, but still would have liked to see Luba. Yeah, going against the tie with zero mana, like you said before, Vladimir using his health to cast spells. That's a very aggressive lane, and he needs that buff. See double lift and Chowster taking up as much experience as they can around the map, just trying to feed themselves in that lane. By the way, not too bad. He is down about 15 CS on Kid, but that lane still 0 1. Kid has that kill, and it's going to be very big as they pressure on continuously. They did not lane swap this game. They left York to go against Diana top. They like the pick on that as York can sustain against that burst of Diana. So the lanes for Invictus are working well, but they're not capitalizing on their chances yet. I really like the, the overall gameplay uh, strategies, though, from Invictus. They're really they're, they're, they're choosing their lanes based on the map objectives. So normally, you know, you see you see teams default to a solo lane top and a double lane bottom because you want to kind of have some pressure around the dragon. It's really not what the choices here are for Invictus. They're actually choosing their solo lane based on the golem buff. You can see them, uh, you know, the, the very first game they gave Jarvan blue buff and sent him bottom lane. This time, they're repeatedly getting PDD on your golem buff and saying, nope, you're going to stay top. Even though Yorick is normally a great one-on-two champion, they don't care so much about that matchup. They're curious about doing that solo lane golem buff all the time, and it's giving them a really good lane advantage here. Uh, you know, even though you see the minion kills are similar between Voiboy Boy and PDD, remember that kills on fools are tracked as well, so that's, a, that's an artificially high number there. So Invictus Gaming with more than a big enough wave to take down this turret. Especially getting the heals out from Alistar as well. Looks like they will back off top lane. Boy Boy going quite aggressive as they hit each other out here. Vladimir actually going down bottom for the gank, but he starts to back off and he knows he can't get under the turret. 
seeing both fights here walk away without any damage. So a nice again attempt overall there. And this is actually a nice move by CLG. They actually sent Hot Shot to mid, and he's completely shoved out that mid lane, denying a bit of farm from Zatai. That's actually really, really useful. It's going to uh, bridge the gold gap just a little bit. Anytime they can kind of clear a lane and deny farm for the opposition, you're always going to start scrolling ahead. It's always good to remember separate harassment, knowing that's going to hurt Zatai as he goes bottom, even if he got the kill. Very well played by CLG right now in the mechanics of the game. PDD again getting blue buff as it came back around. Not much needed for Vladimir, and with the control of CLG's blue buff, they don't have to worry about that lane getting lost. But the one really good thing here, though, is they're going to keep that pressure on onto the turret. The first turret kill going down right here for Invictus. They're going to keep that pressure going. You're going to see, again, just farming against each other in mid lane. There's not going to be a lot done there. There's great wave clearers, great minion farmers for both those sides. You're not going to see, uh, outside of a, of a giant gank attempt, uh, heavy pressure on either of those turrets. But the sides, they're absolutely available. We can see Skarner come in for someone in the near future. Now, I don't think he's going to be able to gank for Voidboy all that well. Ultimate lane matchup does not really reward ganking Voidboy's aggression. Yorick is not the best at bursting someone down. He's just best at being a bully, leaving him alone, and letting him like what Yorick does here. Instead, their pressure is going to be on Big Fat LP. They've got to worry because his Flash and Ult are back up, but they can still make the moves there. And their pressure has been on that bottom lane as well. So Hotshot going for two Dorn Shield in the jungle. What's the purpose of this? Just get himself tanky for early aggression? He's basically worried about a lot of attack damage early on and allows him to sustain himself uh, just in general in that jungle. He's got health for gems, for Doran shields, a lot of health and armor as well. I think it's actually not even so much a counter strategy, but Hotshot realizing that Doran shields are hyper, hyper efficient items and realizing, guys, just buy Doran shields. They're really, really good. All right, Tier of the Goddess going out on top to Yorick as he builds up his mana for himself, continuously sustaining and laying the blue buff and everything, just synergizing very nicely with that lane. However, the kills have been quite scarce this game. 13 minutes in, we saw about three or four kills between the last matchup of Azuru versus Invictus. Now, Logic Gaming has avoided that very, very early aggression. They did lose the first blood, but they've kind of thwarted it since then. Yeah, I really only expect to see moves <clears throat> at the bottom of the map right now. We've got oracles now on both junglers. So you're going to see these lanes get a lot less safe very, very soon. You guys have invested 400 gold in an item. Let's see invisible units such as wards clear them off the map and, and really sort of deny that vision so that ganks can come in blind and get behind people. So you're going to see a lot more aggression coming very, very soon from Illusion and Hot Shot GG. Great CS in mid so far by Zatai. He's looking at 118 minions that he has farmed up. That's going to be gold and experience for himself while even being denied. We saw Hotshot trying to get to lane and harass him a little bit as he went down bottom. It was a good job, though, that the lanes followed each other. Each team is really keeping themselves in the game mentally here, especially first game of the day for CLG. Oh, my gosh, that was a near that steal. Was that was a cool. nice attempt there by Kid. But because of Hotshot's Oracle, they had that swept out. There were no wards in that brush. No one was able to time that buff and clear it away. That otherwise could have been another golem steal. That's actually the first blue buff that still has even gotten in this game. So finally, it's going to get their own buffs on the map. You're going to see this mid-game start to get a little bit better for Camelogic NA. You know, Freak, something we noticed last game is they didn't have oracles until about 25, 26, 27 minutes into the game. Invictus was knowing which lanes the champions were in because they were pressuring so hard. Now with Hotshot going in and clearing out wards, they actually have picked one up as well because they know that map awareness is so crucial. So they're going to start off on Baron as they know they swept the wards out. They had to take the bottom lane. The difficulty though is Voivod has teleport. If the fight starts, it would be a 5-on-5. Five five. However, they just did such an amazing job of sweeping out the map and denying vision. They got a completely free dragon attempt. 3,000 gold up. Voivod making a good counterattack move. He's going for the turret here. The problem is he's been denied a lot in lane. He's not going to kill this turret too easily. There's not a, a really all that important of a counterattack. Some minions were lost there to the turret. A little bit of farm that PDD is not getting here, but really, uh, that dragon move was the right call. Invictus continue to claw themselves ahead in this game. So it is going to be 19,100 gold to 15,600. A lead that used to be in favor of CLG for just a few hundred gold is now quite in the favor of Invictus Gaming. Cassiopeia getting that blue as we saw them. 
said that that Oracle's paying dividends so far, and really, if she were to continuously be denied that blue buff, it would be a very easy lane for Zatai in mid, and Big Fat would be forced to just farm under the turret without any aggression. Hotshot coming in here, the Oracles to face off against each other, but Boy Boy comes in as well. You'll see movement from Zatai here, Big Fat's kind of trying to hold him off as well. They get the flash out of Illusion. This is already an amazing play. If they can get out without wasting the summoner. But it's going to be a big fight as CDD comes down. They find themselves in a 3v3. No, Boy Boy flashes as Twin Fang comes out to spit out a few bits of damage. Xiao Xiao very close. They take out Boy Boy. Big Fat forced the flash as well. This is quickly going in favor of Invictus Gaming. See if they can close anything out. Looks like everyone else trying to run away. Hotshot, though, a bit isolated in the jungle. Can he make it out? Watson is a tie in Shasha. There's a stun. That's going to be. Oh, blast! Hotshot! What a move right there! Amazing job. Chowster now very hurt, but that's not the focus. Kid trying to put some damage onto double it so he can't turn around back in this fight. A beautiful push here in mid. Invictus on the aggression that we saw very early against the Zubu Frost now as they just continuously go for turrets. It looks like they will full on go for this one. Xiao taking some uh, area of effect damage from Big Fat. And it looks like he will be able to clear and save the turret in 16 minutes. And that is one of the reasons you pick Cassiopeia. She is great at clearing out minion waves. Really up there with Twist of Fate and Anivia as really good counter pushers. So CLG keeping that turret alive is actually hugely, hugely important for them. They cannot give up more mid-game advantages. They need to withstand that IG aggression. The fight's been going in their favor, but only down one kill. The turret's been going away, but only down one. The dragon's been going away, but only down one. CLG are just barely holding on, but they need to get something back in their favor pretty soon. Freak definitive minion kills in lanes. 129 to Yorick, 103 to Diana. Boy Boy losing that top lane quite a bit. Middle lane goes down, however, and they get everybody some very much needed gold. We see Zetai against Big Fat, 142 to 107, and the 80 carries Kid versus Double Lift is 132 to 99. That average is about 25 to 30 more CS on three of the heaviest carries. That's actually a huge, huge deal overall, because individual power just means so, so very much. Getting gold on a carry means more than getting gold on a support overall. Hotshot chasing down PDD. He's going to get something out of this, but I don't know if it's too much. His team does chase on down, but Hotshot not able to put enough slowing down. He couldn't slow him long enough for his team to show up. But CLG kind of taking a page out of Invictus' book. Suddenly they're five strong on one side of the map out of nowhere, and they're going to go for some pressure. But a little bit too long, that last minion wave kind of stopping that aggression. The rest of Invictus did show up to the top lane, stop that push from really happening, but CLG would really love to get some extra turret pressure here. Yeah, it's going to have to work out that way for Counter Logic Gaming. If those instances where they travel as five do not work out, they're still getting less and less experience. And with the minion count being so low for their team, the late game is going to be quite difficult around the mid game. Until those fights start going one or two in their favor, they're not going to get their core items as fast. You can see Double Lift trying to get the Bloodthirster most likely out as quick as he can. Corgi has already finished the try for it. Yeah, that just came in there. And you buy that item for two reasons. One is mid-game power, and two is to keep bullying the opposition. You know, when, when you come into that game and you realize, like, hey, I'm doing really well. I'm, I'm, I'm chunking my opponent. We got first blood. I'm, I'm doing a lot of good things. You want to get that Trinity Force to cement your advantage. He's got a gigantic item switch over Double Lift right now. He just grabbed the BF Sword. If they get into a battle, while the basic auto-attack damage is a bit better for Double Lift, there's just a lot of damage sources here for Kid. He's got some extra ability power for his, for his spells to come out, and he's got a lot of damage due to that Trinity Force proc, whether he slows his opponent down and keeps chasing, or he just gets a lot of bonus damage every time he puts his ability out. Freak. Oh wow, Xiao Xiao taking a lot of damage, and I don't think his ultimate's gonna be enough. He does turn back around to go down. Nice move there, CLG, really, they're collecting themselves together, and Big Fat LP is being a force to be reckoned with. He's landing those crowd controls and setting up his team for a lot of, a lot of, a lot of good situations. It's the kind of thing that CLG needs. They need constant aggression. They need things to go their way mid-game. Now, three, two or three of the wards just went down, but we can see the control, the aggressive wards in the side of Counter Logic Gaming, all the way up through that red buff and then down towards Dragon as well. Three wards on Zatai, the AP carry, and one on his support. Huge pull in, impale on the double lift, and he goes down. Zatai with one more. That's exactly what they wanted to have happen, and that is why you bring Skarner into a lineup. Is he makes your attack damage carry to suddenly die. And this is going to be hard because Double Lift is still trying to finish his Infinity Edge. He's going to have to spend the 1200 gold to finish that item and then spend the other 1600 in order to get a quick silver sash. He's 3000 gold away from being able to survive Skarner. 
Boy Boy keeping that global presence down. Oh, they're coming out of the turret. It's going to be a huge invade here by uh, Invictus Gaming, but it looks like they push everybody out of the attack range. Kid could go down and get the ultimate thrown on him, and they do grab a turret out of him, so that's going to be good gold, good pressure. They've got him on their heels, but Boy Boy, meanwhile... Boy Boy, meanwhile, up in the top lane, is just going for that turret pressure over... Actually, a PDD might get jumped out here. Hawkeye's going to keep trying to clear him out. He lands the cleaver down as well. Taking some damage from the backside. Those minions in there as well. He's going to buy time for his teammate. And Boy Boy coming in from the side. Jazz out. Good fall. PDD can fall. There's one. There's two. And the dragon was killed. But those two kills are worth it. Nice job, CLG. Very nice job. Coming down from the top. I like how Hotshot stood in the middle. Kind of pulling their attention as Boy Boy could come in strong there. They see that that was thwarted out, but like you said, grabbing those two kills, Invictus kind of won that fight. It, you know, it's, it's very, very back and forth there. You know, Invictus getting that dragon does keep the gold lead the same, but if CLG could turn those kills into an advantage somewhere else by taking a turret, that's going to be ultimately worth it for CLG. If no capitalization happens here, then it's pretty much a wash. You can kind of continue, uh, you know, as you were and realize, hey, it's still dragons in one lead, hey, it's turrets in lead there. You know, but looks like with three members bottom, they are going to turn those kills into a push. So Boy Boy bringing himself back into this game. Now only 10 CS, which was 30 off of that Yorick top. Just Ty getting harassed in middle here, trying to continuously slow for Big Fat to get there for more damage. Looks like they're just forced to farm at that second turret. A lot of ground has been gained by Invictus Gaming, but that turret being taken down, the second tier in top lane, could pay huge dividends in late game's push. Hotshot is very good at just splitting off with his team, and they also have a team freak that can fight as four effectively. Ultimately, though, I, I like the overall team from Invictus. Their, their team fight potential is just so very, very good. If you look at CLG's roster, it's a lot of backline damage effort with Cassiopeia, uh, you know, played by Big Fat LP, and Doublelift on Graves. There's a lot of damage there that's going to be, you know, thrown out and, and putting out a lot of pressure. They've got a nice front line of Hot Shot GG on Mundo and some good utility from Chasers Lulu. The wild card here, though, is Boy Boy uh, playing that Diana. She's going to want to jump in primarily as an assassin. You can see Sword Shoes and Abyssal Scepter already done. You can expect a death by her grasp likely to be up next or very, very soon overall. She's going to try to kill off Kid's Corky. She, that's kind of the primary target here, the primary kill attempt for, uh, for CLG. Kind of like what Invictus was doing last time where they were diving an AD carry. They have the same kind of choice here. The problem is they've got Yorick. Yorick shuts down that kind of strategy. He's, he's just going to clone Kid. And if Kid falls, that Revenant's going to revive Ooh. him, and he's kind of just going to be back in the battle. <laughs> Zhao Xiao being taken down by one-third of his HP, forced back here. Now, if they saw that happen, this could easily be a dance for that Baron. The damage is out. Looks like Double is still trying to finish that Infinity Edge. He is about 500 gold off of that with a little bit more to add on. So he's got some work to do here. He is not, he is not getting minions in lane anymore. He's not farming. These kills are going to come a lot slower. So the fact that he has not finished his core item between that eight, 15 to 18 minutes is going to really affect the team. So let's see how this actually ends up panning out here because you've got a really scary situation where CLG's got to buy a little bit of time for them. They need double up to finish that Infinity Edge. And, and, and the thing is, it might not even matter if he gets caught by Skarner. So CLG needs two major things here. Double up needs a couple hundred more gold. Currently at 800. He actually needs to get back to base and buy yeah, an item, ultimately. Um, but he doesn't have time. That Baron, of course, getting danced for. Him. But after that, he needs to be safe in a fight. There's so much dive potential from IG. Now, they're not going to focus him with bruises so much. You know, Vladimir's not going to dive onto him. They don't have, like, an Aurelia or a Nocturne or a Jarvan like we saw last game where they're going to go and the fight to double him. It's really, they're going to pull double lift out. It's all about Shao Shao and Illusion. Can they make that happen? Can they pull him in and focus him out? If they are not able to, double lift with an Infinity Edge is going to out DPS Kid on Quirky. The, the overall damage per second is going to be higher for an Infinity Edge with Quick Draw, with Lulu in the back giving you a shield, having that pick steal some extra damage with you as well. There's a lot of damage out there. Oh, we have Corellia's on him, Pale to Hotshot. Can he get his ultimate off? The Ignite is on, and it's just too much front and burst. They take him down in pursuit. No, Freak, it looks like they turn for Baron. This is a great attempt. The, the jungler is dead. There is so little chance for a steal here. If, if, there, if the steal does come out from CLG, it'll be the most magnificent play ever. It's already four on five. Their jungler is already out of the mix. It's already out of half health. This is looking like a very, very safe uh, Baron attempt for Invictus with a very slim chance to steal. A hot shot did it with the Ionic Spark last time. 
the tie on a killing spree as Chowsford goes down. They're trying to get into this one too quickly, and it looks like they may be able to take out a few in their favor. Garner smiting down Baron. Big Fat takes down Alistar, and now they will pursue into this fight. We do see just above them. Here comes the tie on top. PDD getting the knife down. A nice petrifying gaze, trying to slow this in. And I like how Boy Boy tried to stand behind uh, Big Fat, but it just was too much burst for Phosphorus. Boy Boy looking to go down here. There's a lot of chase, but it looks like he will make it out alive. Corky is on that top side, going towards Tribush. He will have the movement as Valkyrie comes in, and it looks like he will be able to get the chase on. He's just within range. Valkyrie is two seconds from up. He's going to be on Boy Boy right now. The attack goes in. Boy Boy trying to burst, and he comes up with the pursuit kill for Kid. Nice job overall. Invictus now up in kills. Dragon's turrets and Baron. They are in the driver's seat here. Now it's a 7,000 gold lead. That initial pull on the hot shot, and that's what happens. That Invictus Gaming team is rolling as five, starting from like 20 minute mark, and they just look for that one guy to pounce upon. The, the initiation here, the flash, the Shirelias, everything coming on from Skarner, is trying to find a champion to kill. They do it, even when it's hot shot, even when it's a tanky, tanky Dr. Mundo, they just have the damage to make a five on four. And from there, they just control every other advantage. I like what they did with the Baron attempt, where they sent two out of the pit just to zone out the still opposition, trading the kills out, but securing that Baron kill. And now it's still that Baron buff, and it keeps pushing on. They have a great team for pushing these turrets. Wild Ghost going out on Hot Shot, but again, the Ignite goes down, and he is just obliterated. The ultimate not even saving. This is really one of the weaknesses of Dr. Mundo, is this mid-game crest is when he's least tanky. Now, a lot of them, you see them go for early gold generation, you know, Nautilus and Maokai, they'll grab a Philosopher's Stone and, and a Heart of Gold, and they'll just sort of try to get a Glacial Shroud finish in time to be tanky. Dr. Mundo on Hot Shot, he's still trying to finish major items. He's got, a, he's got, uh, he's got those, the uh, Soul Shroud Spirit Visage up there, he's got Mercury Trades, he's got a Heart of Gold, he's got Doran Shields, he's got a lot of, like, Moderately good items, but he's not to the point where he can face and take a cheat right now. He needs a he needs uh, you know a war mog's armor or a sunfire cape or a randomus omen to withstand what IG is throwing out there. So the next you know five to ten minutes as Hotshot tries to get some gold on, he's going to keep dying this way, and they're okay to focus the tank. And because they have ten thousand gold, they can just keep picking off one kill and picking up a turret, picking off a kill and picking up a turret. They're up six three. They're going to keep that going. You know, Freak, I like the last donation. We saw Corky, it was Kid, and uh, it was PDD going in for red buff, and they gave it to PDD. What's the point of giving your melee that red? Well, there's a difference between giving a melee champion and a ranged champion that lives with us. But when you're a melee champion, your slow is actually much heavier, and you're going to kind of just see him in general, you know, be in the front line and land a lot of basic attacks. On the other side, though, of course, Corky with that Trinity Force has a slow anyway, so you don't need to sack them. Good slow back, keeping Illusion off at last Impale as Chowster is the one in the backside to tie. However, they're looking quite aggressive as he put, uh, uh, builds up his Tides of Blood. He gets more spell vamp in his attack. A hit out on Chowster, and they are the one to find him. Still, I believe, not having the headbutt. No, they go for Chowster. Wild Ghost pops him up. A good slow for the entire team. The Glitterlands could not be enough here. The Valkyrie in. Kid picks up another kill. 5-0 and 2 on the maps now. And they are going for the Inhibitor turret. Not enough minions, though. They're going to be forced to back off, but they have a full control, and they're just more than happy to ring or go around the horn here of CLG's base. Yeah, they've got a giant minion wave in the top lane. Whenever you want to push, try to ride the minion wave in. And there's the initiation. They're going to catch up with the board, boys. Boy Boy goes down in a second. Hot shot GG once again. The Hemo Plague doesn't even get time to proc. They wipe out Counter Logic Gaming in their base. One more attack onto Big Fat will be the ace. And they're just chasing him down. He can't get a kill. The double kill coming in for Big Fat. And now they're forced to just mill about. They can't hit the inhibitors yet. They need some waves to get in here. You can just see PDD. And he's like, I think I can back here. Give me eight seconds. Well, they're going to try to regroup here. <laughs> and Victus, oh, it's like the GG call is out. They don't even care. They're just going to die to turn for free. Why not? GG called out. The surrender vote is in, guys. Congratulations to Invictus Gaming, bringing it back one to one. They're taking the win over Counter Logic Gaming. An amazing game played there. And sometimes in the group stage, you really need to just sit back and say, "This isn't our game." You know, it's not like we can go into a, a best of three here. So let's rethink this and come into our next matchup.